so thinking of playing this is going to be, well, I hope, something of a, a wider exploration of this game. It's not very deep, uh, but I guess it's a it's a middle light, a light middle weight game. Um, Infidel, Supremacy of Cavalry in the Crusader era, 11th and 12th century, a game designed by Richard Berg. GMT Games, uh, 2011. The Battle of Haran, uh, First Crusade, uh, fought in May 1104. Uh, forces on the Crusader side, 3,000 knights, 9,000 infantry. Uh, Muslim forces, total numbers unknown. Location, present day southeast Turkey. Casualties, no reliable estimates. In spring 1104, Bohemond of Antioch joined with Baldwin of Edessa to capture the fortress of Haran. A, a relieving Muslim army came upon the Christians outside the city. Bohemond and Baldwin split their forces. The Edessans, um, Edessines facing the Muslim attack while the Antiochians uh, hid in ambush. But the Muslims used the well-tried stratagem of fleeing, luring Baldwin's men straight into the maw of the main Muslim force. By the time Bohemond entered the battle, the Edessenes had been cut apart. All right, let's start with the map. Uh, map scale is about 250 yards per hex. Um, how big is 250 yards for one of these hexes? That is uh, two, that is a little more than two uh, football fields end to end. That's American football fields uh, with end zones. So, in, to my mind, that gives a good, um, I don't know, uh, reference point. So, these uh, hexes are actually pretty big, no, to my way of thinking. Um, and I'm glad I do this uh, to put this in perspective. This is actually, again, uh, as far as where my mind's eye started, um, uh, these hexes are bigger than I was thinking. Overall battlefield larger than I was thinking. Um, terrain, obviously we have some uh, a rise there on the right, and then we have that stream in the center. Okay, so that's level two terrain, uh, right here, level two terrain. Um, so for this battle, we have upslope and downslope. So movement costs for mounted and foot going upslope is plus one, and for foot going downslope is plus one. Um, it looks like no, no shock DRMs for mounted or foot. Um, then we have then we have a cavalry may not charge across rivers or steep slope hex sides. Nor may they charge. Nor may they charge a unit in a Wismar city or rough hex. Okay, the stream that divides the armies, uh, right down the middle there. By the way, that is. Oh, I covered up the. Eh, I covered up the. Uh, the the north. Pointing arrow. Oh well. Well, it clearly divides the armies right across, the middle. It's the Balak. Oh. Wait, wait, is Bollock the name or is that stream? Oh, well, it's labeled Bollock. Whether that's stream or whether that's actually the name of the stream. Um, the only thing that's relevant there is that foot. Foot will pay one extra to cross that stream. Um, no shock DRM for foot or mounted. There are four uh, counter types. We have leaders like Jocelyn here. Um, we have combat units like these men-at-arms, crossbowmen, or, or archers. Uh, we have standards like that. This is the standard for Baldwin. Um, and then we have mark status markers like uh, retired. Um, so for the sample leader here, we have activation rating, two in this case. Uh, the name and command stripe, so the, the blue corresponds to that blue formation throughout for formation identification. Um, uh, nationality, uh, right there, Tur Turbessel. 
Um, so nationality or, I guess, uh, faction identification. Um, then we have overall commander. Okay, so an overall commander like Baldwin II here um, has uh, the, uh, the two stars there. Um, and uh, Crusader Charisma. Well, Crusader Charisma would be a plus number down here in the lower left. Looks like neither of these guys have them. Alright, over here we have activation rating, two for Jocelyn or three for Baldwin. Um, then here, the white number on a black circle, small white number in a black circle, is a command range. And then finally, the white number in the black square in the lower right is the movement allowance. For the uh, combat unit, in this case a light cavalry archer, uh, Turkoman. Uh, so we have a unit ID number, one in this case, so that will be uh, distinct for every single unit. Um, nationality, again, Turkoman. For the command stripe, that kind of, uh, I don't know, silver, I guess. Silver in the background corresponds to the formation that this unit belongs to. Um, we have shock, shock defense DRM plus one. Um, unit type, again, LC forward slash A, or light cavalry archer, and movement allowance, eight. On the back side, we have the, uh, what do we have here? Okay, so we have a different, um, uh, disordered shock defense DRM, plus two now. Um, disordered movement allowance, seven in this case. D for disordered, D for disordered. And then F minus one is a reminder, uh, minus one fire uh, DRM. Um, Men of Iron is a play-oriented series of games covering the, the wide spectrum of land battles from uh, roughly the era just prior to the first crusade, crusades to the arrival of gunpowder. Um, let's take a look at the, or let's go over the extended sequence of play. All right, first we have a phase A, the activation phase. Choose a command to activate or pass. This may include a standard. If a free activation. If a standard is activated, rally all retired units in or adjacent to its hex and skip to phase E, or, or the last phase of the uh, sequence of play, or move the standard, or move the standard. Uh, then we have a phase B, move and fire phase. Move and or fire with any or all of the units in that command. Before moving any units, place any replacement leaders. A mounted missile unit may fire at any point during its move. And we're definitely going to have mounted missile units here. A foot missile unit, we have foot missile units as well. May fire only at the end of its move. A unit may fire without moving. Each unit must finish its movement firing before another unit may begin to move fire. The non-active player's units may qualify for reaction or reaction slash return fire or counter charge depending on the active player's actions. Then we have uh, phase C which is shock. Um, after all movement firing for the activated command is complete shock combat and charges may be initiated. The active player designates which of his units are attacking which defending units including charges. One at a time the attacker moves each charging unit adjacent to its target. Any reaction fire caused by this move is resolved. If required, the charging unit makes a charge reluctance roll. Any retreat before combat may, uh, by the defender is resolved at this time. The defender attempts to counter charge uh, or attempts any counter charges of which he is capable. The attacker resolves all his shock and charge attacks in any order he wishes. The charge table is used as long as at least half of the units in an individual attack succeeded in charging, not disordered by reaction fire, not reluctant, not countercharged. Otherwise, the shock table is used. Okay. Advances are taken and continued attack markers are placed. Play note, attacks by a single attacker against multiple defenders are resolved at the same time, and they are considered to be going on simultaneously with results which can be cumulative applied after both attacks are resolved. All continued attacks are now resolved. Begin again at step one here. I just went through four steps. 
Again, uh, this is the shock phase, four steps. I didn't number them. So step one is basically designation of units. Uh, two is moving, moving and possible reaction fire and counter charges. Three is shock and charge attacks. And then four is continued attacks. So we're saying begin again at the step one, that, that is designation of units. Um, except that all units marked with a continued attack marker must attack. Charging and countercharging is not allowed. Okay. Uh, then we go on to phase D, rally phase. Rally any disordered units that didn't, did nothing for the entire activation and that are currently not adjacent to an enemy unit. That's easy enough. And then finally, phase E, continuation phase. Um, so, okay, so we have continued attacks, which is one thing, and then we have continuation phase which is separate. Phase E, continuation phase. If the completed activation was a free activation, both players make a loss check. If the game does not end due to loss check, pass, or choose another command to, act, to attempt to activate. Okay, three bullets. This cannot, bullet one, this cannot be the command that just went, unless you only have one command remaining. So this, this takes care of consecutive activations of the same command, with one exception. Um, bullet two, your opponent may attempt to seize continuity, so there, so there is a seizure mechanic. If so, he chooses one of his leaders to activate and rolls the die, adding any modifiers and compares it to the, his leader's activation rating. If successful, he activates that command and proceeds from phase B, okay. Meaning, proceeding from phase B means he goes right up to move fire phase, and obviously you're not doing the activation phase because, because this is part of, not part. Because you started with something resolved during the continuation phase. Okay. Um, if not, you get a special free activation and then you proceed back up to phase A, right? So, so successfully seizing continuity, you start with move and fire in phase B. If not, you get a special free activation and start at phase A which again is activation phase. Except, uh, okay, you proceed to phase A, except you can choose to activate any command, including com the command that just finished its activation. Okay. Okay. And then bullet three, if no seizure attempt occurs, you roll the die, adding any modifiers and compare it to your chosen leader's activation rating. If successful, activate that command and proceed from phase B, movement and firing. If not, your opponent gets a free activation and proceeds to phase A. Okay. I actually remember this from before. This sequence of play, it's nice. It's a continuous action. This is this is not a distinct uh, quote unquote turn design. This is a this is a continuous activation design. Um, and I do remember vaguely a couple years back um, taking a look at this, having an, uh, doing an off the shelf session with this, and I remember that I needed to just go through the sequence of play to really to really get it. So. Where to next?